through bringing this kind of pressure, he is able to uh, force, and not just him, the other activists, there's the other activists in the Independence Club as well, they're able to force changes in the Korean government. And one of them is setting up a privy council that will kind of act as a advisors to the king on state issues or to the to the emperor by this point and it's important to understand that as these protests grow more and more violent more and more moderates leave the movement so philip jason actually ends up leaving the movement and returning to the united states when he says we're we're not going to accomplish anything here all we're going to do is create a more and more violent situation and so the moderate le leaders leave and they end up ceding the field to people like Sigmund Rhee who are more radical so what he's arrested for is when he gets on this privy council he recommends the recall of Park Young Hill and these other Koreans who had been involved in previous reform movements and also tangentially involved in the murder of Queen Min during a during an uprising of reformists in Korea. And this is about as radical as you can get, calling these people who are, who many of the royalists view as regicides, calling them back to Korea and saying that these people deserve a place of influence in Korea's modernization reform. Most of his contemporaries look on this action by Sigmund Rhee and say this was ultimately about the most foolish thing that he could have done. I mean, he'd just gotten some reforms enacted in the government, he'd placed himself and other reformers in a position of, of influence with the king, and then to overreach in this regard was just unthinkable to them. And this is what leads to his arrest. This is where he crosses the line in the Koreans' mind from a, a reformer to a radical. And now the interesting thing was, is he probably, so they order his arrest, and he flees to an American legation. And if he just would have stayed there and probably would have stayed there for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, he probably would have been OK. But he doesn't. For uh, reasons that are somewhat obscure, he leaves the legation with an American missionary thinking that if he's with the missionary, he'll be fine. It turns out that that was not the case. And the moment he leaves the legation, even though he's in the company of an American missionary, he's arrested and he's imprisoned. Now, even there, he might have been OK. The missionaries are visiting him every day. They're using their influence with the court to try to get him released. They're seeing that he's not tortured. But again, his radicalism shows through, and he decides to hatch an escape plot from prison. He, uh, he and a few friends manage to have some weapons smuggled into them. They break out of prison, shooting a guard in the process, and they are instantly captured once they get out. And now he moves from being a political dissident to really a felon. He's uh, sentenced to life in prison, although some of his accomplices were given the death sentence. And now he's essentially placed beyond the reach of his missionary patrons. He's tortured seriously, very seriously, during this, this first year that he's now in as a convicted felon. And very well could have gotten the death sentence. And it's probably because of all of his friends in the reform movement, because of American missionaries, that they managed to spare his life, although they do not spare him an absolutely miserable experience and several weeks of torture.